Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to learn to draw and then paint a really simple flower garland. And today's video is sponsored by Paul Rubens Watercolour. They've sent me two sets of beautiful watercolours, one regular colours and the other is pearlescent, so we're going to put some metallics in. So grab your paints and let's get started. So let's see what I've got in terms of the Paul Rubin sets of paints. So two very beautiful boxes came in the post. This one here is for the regular watercolours and this rather shiny one is for the pearlescent watercolours. And then I've got a beautiful um, sort of journal notebook um, of watercolour paper and it is a block so that means that you have to get your little scalpel in and slice under the paper which I have done already and what I love about this is it lies completely flat which is a really fantastic thing when you're sort of sketching and painting on the go but I want to have a look at the paints before we do anything else so this very beautiful box lovely pink color and a lovely metal tin. Now the metal tin is also your palette, so that's really fantastic to have an enamel tin there with the separate wells for the colors and also up here is great. And I've got a little color swatch chart, which is really helpful. Obviously I don't speak the language, but I can still use the color swatches, which is really handy. And now I just need to unwrap all these pans and we can get started. So I'm all ready and set up to paint. We've unwrapped all the pans. Um, now one of the challenges with a new set of paints, especially one that has uh, colors and instructions in different languages, is knowing exactly what you're gonna get when you wake up those paints and put them on the page. So I've done a little series of swatches on a bit of watercolor paper, just matching the colors to where they are in the pans and that's always really really handy uh, you can cut it down keep it in your um, tin as a nice handy reference or if you want you can always write down the names as well which is really useful if you're ever needing a refill so I've got that as a nice reference and the first thing we're going to do today is we're actually going to do a, a little sketch first because uh, I'm going to teach you how to paint a really simple, fun floral garland and I'm going to use the Paul Rubens watercolour paper pad which is just lovely. It lies perfectly flat and I think that is a big plus when it comes to doing any kind of painting in a journal, in a book like this. They're really fantastic for when you're on the move because they just fold down really neatly and it just looks really nice. So anyway, with a pencil, what we're gonna do is we're going to do a nice floral garland. Um, so firstly, we need to mark out the sort of shape of it. So I'm doing just a, a really flat semi-circle there. Now I'm drawing with an HB pencil, I'm drawing quite heavily for the sake of filming, uh, but I highly recommend that you draw much more lightly. However, what we're going to do is we're going to draw this for reference and then the beauty of having two pages is we can then just paint and refer downwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in some very rough circles of differing sizes and that is going to be the guide for the size and shape of my flowers and then we can add in some little leaves and extra bits. So let's get painting. I'm using my own paint brushes. I've got a range from really small four tenths up to a nice medium sized four. And I also do have my metallic pearlescent paints to one, ha one side and I've done a little swatch for those as well. I'm just letting them dry because the pearlescents really come out when they have fully dried. So we will be incorporating those in a little while. But let's get started. So I'm gonna teach you a really simple, fun flower. And I'm gonna go for a, I think I'm gonna go for a sort of pinky red color, sort of somewhere near an alizarin and crimson, I think. And just gonna use the well of my palette. And because it's enamel, it just works really beautifully. The paint sits in there really nicely. So what we need is quite a concentrated amount of wet paint 
and I am going to paint in a blob of watercolour quite a lot of paint, quite a lot of colour on there clean my brush right off in the water and just using now the fine tip of the brush I'm going to use all that wetness that's in that central circle to paint out a lovely petal shape. So let me do that again, just using the fine tip of my brush, just creating like a channel out from that central circle. And I'm squishing my brush down and just creating the shape, whether you can do it in two strokes or you need one extra one just like that just to get it going. So I cleaned off my brush each time. I'm not picking up too much water, but I do need to have a nice wet brush. And I'm going to attempt to get five petals in this flower. And all the color is coming from that central circle, which you can see is really now on its lowest reserves. And what I'm going to do really quickly, whilst I still can, is just pick up some orange and dab that in the middle. And I'm gonna just allow that to sit there and it will very slowly over the course of this tutorial bleed out. Now that is a really pretty, but very, very simple flower. And I love painting those because you could just paint those to your heart's content to the end of the day. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place in another one just here and I'm going to use this colour palette that I've sort of begun with. Uh, I'm now going to choose the orange. So let's do that once more, shall we? So just following down from here, a nice blob of paint. And you can really see from the side that is sitting up on the page. Now, cleaning off my brush, I'm still going to use my size four brush, but we just need to make sure it can make a nice fine point. If you're struggling to get your brush into a fine point, just sort of swizzle it a bit in the palette there and you'll get it. Now I'm going to poke the first petal into the gap here. because we're really stretching out what we've got on the page here, it dries very quickly. And look at that, that's quite fun, isn't it? So if you do manage to paint your flowers fast enough, you will also manage to get uh, a bit more of a bleed going out into those edges. Okay, so I'm gonna paint two more of these flowers and then we're gonna start adding some leaves and some metallics. So I've got my four flowers all in different stages of, of drying and blending. Um, and that's the fun with this very simple flower tutorial is they'll all come out in slightly different styles just depending on how fast you're going um, and how much water and paint you're using. So I've used these sort of lovely purple alizarin crimson tones and the orange there. Now I'm going to pop in a few leaves. So uh, let's see, I've got some really nice greens here. I think I'll begin with this one here. It's probably closest to sap green. And it's amazing how different they look when first in the palette, really dark, then they come onto the mixing wells and obviously adding a bit of water lightens them up. And then once they're on the page, well, it's a very different story, but I think I'd like to get two tones of green, maybe even three, why not? They're just, it's so lovely to have the choice. I'm really impressed actually with the range of colours you get in these ready-made sets of pans because that can be the only sort of drawback I think when you are 
buying a set that's sort of chosen for you, but you could always start sort of mixing and matching yourself. So back to the tutorial, we've got our curve here and we're just mimicking it here. So I'm now going to just begin to accentuate those curves by popping in some leaves and I'm just going to do really simple tapered lines with my size 2 brush dropping in some of that darker colour there using a similar technique to what I was doing with the petals and of course I've got my slightly smaller brushes just in case I want even more control so I could always add a second stroke there to turn it into a leaf that's got a little bit of a central line and now I'm just going to sort of work my way around the garland finding the gaps looking for shapes and curves so I think the most important thing about painting little garlands and things like this is the sort of absence of too many straight lines. We really want to embrace the, the natural sway of the way the leaves grow and the flowers and just sort of to have some fun with it. So starting with the fine tip squishing the belly of the brush down and then if you want dropping in a little bit of another colour which will just help you either sort of finesse the shape or just add a little bit more interest in there. We've filled up the shape nicely um, so I'm now going to say goodbye to my regular transparent watercolours and say hello to my pearlescent ones. So I've also done, as I showed you just earlier, a little swatch sheet to show the lovely colours when they are, have water and added to the paper because they do look a little bit different. And some I found um, really looked very different uh, when I first painted them into how they've dried. So that's another thing that's really important with the pearlescent watercolours. Um, I think you have to wake them up with a little more vigour and that means getting a clean wet brush into the pan and really um, swishing the colour round and really getting quite a lot of pigment onto the brush before you add it to the page because they are naturally just a lot more translucent um, than their regular counterparts. So let's put some pearlescent paint onto our piece. So I'm going to use my big brush to wake them up and then I'll be using a smaller brush to add the details. So I think I really liked this colour up here. They're still a little bit wet from when I was doing the swatches, but yeah, I'm really picking up quite a lot of pigment there, popping it into the palette. You want it wet, but really quite concentrated. I've also got clean water as well. That's very important. Um, I think this orange is fantastic. I'm looking for the colours on my uh, swatches that really sort of show up quite bold because I want them to be layered on top of these flowers really nicely. Now of course you could always use these to paint the flowers themselves, that would be really really fun. Um, and so you've got a pearlescent wash going on. And then let's have a bit of this one. So I'm just mimicking the flower colours. And what I find interesting is just some of the different colours have slightly different um, textures. This one feels a tiny bit more grainy. That'll probably be down to how the paint is made, but they're all really lovely. Okay, I'm going to use my four tenths brush and I'm just gonna have a bit of fun with this now. So I might even pick up some straight from the palette if I feel the need. So I'm gonna use the contrasting colour so I'm going to do some dots around the edge so maybe they're starting to look a little like anemones maybe 
and just squishing the brush down even with this teeny tiny brush I can still achieve a lovely broad line When dabbing them just in dots like this, you can see they really show up even against this slightly darker colour. And I might do some thinner lines here. So yeah, you can choose how you wish to add metallics to your garland. I've just mixed up a little bit of this dark green as well just to see if there are one or two places where we can add some green to those leaves. Um, so this has been a sponsored post by Paul Rubens so I have been paid to try out their paints for the sake of transparency um, but at the same time I always make sure before I agree to these things that I am a fan of the brand and I think it's a really good quality brand that's something I think you guys will benefit from me having a go at um, and so if you're interested in getting yourself some either some of their regular watercolors or the metallics you can find uh, information on how to get yourself some in the episode notes but for now, there we have a really lovely uh, floral garland using the benefit of having a flat opening journal where I can draw my sketch up there and then separately down here have a go at this. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that and how we broke that down into some really simple steps. I want to say a huge thank you to Paul Rubens for sponsoring this video and for letting me have a go with their wonderful paints. Thanks so much also to my patrons for your support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and let me know in the comments how you got on with that one. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye.